Hey everyone, this is Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool glowing ocean scene inside of Blender. Now, this isn't a typical tutorial because I'm actually doing a collaboration with Yonwei. He's a great guy, he has an amazing channel with a ton of Blender tutorials showing you cool tips and tricks, so you should really check it out and subscribe if you haven't already. He's going to be showing you part one of this tutorial, which actually involves creating this boat model here, as well as the cans, and he's going to show you how to texture and set up the material for them too. So I'm going to put a link in the description below for that. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this ocean here, and how to set up the material to make it look like it's a glowing ocean. We're also going to go over creating these jellyfish that are under the surface, as well as creating these glowing particles. So, let's get started. First thing we want to do is switch back to the default view and I'm just going to drag this over a little bit and press T to or N to collapse this menu here. And we want to make this torus all one object so that we don't have to select all of them separately. So to do that I'm just going to add in an empty really quickly. And I'll press Alt G so it's in the center of our scene. And then I'm just going to go to wireframe and press B to box select and if I select everything like that I can press control P and object keep transform so that everything will move when I move this empty like that so I'm just going to rename this empty as the boat and these cans are fine except I want to connect these two together so I'm just going to press control J and now we can start working on our glowing C so I'm just going to head over to the second layer and I'm going to press shift S so you can set our cursor to the center press shift A to add a plane and I'm going to scale this up by 10 and I'll tab into edit mode press W to subdivide bring the cuts up to 10 and subdivide one more time so that's looking good now I'm going to add in a subdivision surface modifier set that to 2 add in a displacement modifier make a new texture and I'm going to name it big and we'll click this to go over to our texture settings I'm going to switch it to Veronai and I'm going to increase this uh, size to about 1.5. Now we'll head back over to the modifier tab and decrease the strength all the way to 0 0.05 so that we just get some slight uh, distortion in the plane. And we're going to add another subdivision surface modifier and one more displacement modifier. And we'll name this one small. And if we go over to the texture panel settings, we can change this from Veronoi to clouds and decrease the size to 0.25. And then in the modifier tab, we'll decrease the strength to 0.03. And that's looking pretty good. So now I'm just going to combine the two layers and position this ocean exactly where I want it. So I'm going to move it down a bit so that our boat is just above the water like that and then we can select our cans and in front view I'm going to just move them over here and we need to scale these down so just press S to scale them down maybe a little bigger than that and then we can start moving them around so I'll just put one here and just press R twice to move it with the trackball rotation. Select the other one and do the same thing. And you can see that it looks like it's just floating in the water right now. So that's kind of what we want. I'm going to duplicate some more, get some random rotation like that. Maybe scale one of them down a bit. And just play around with this, have fun, and try to make it look a little bit interesting by giving something else to look at as well I'm gonna put one way back out there 
I might move those two down a little bit. And I might duplicate both of those and put them back here as well. So that's looking pretty good now. Uh, I'm going to press Control Alt Zero when we're in front view to snap our camera to view. And I'm going to select our camera and press Alt G so it's in the center of our scene. So now we can press G and the middle mouse button and drag it out like that. And G and Z to move it up. Rotate it on the X axis. Move it along the X axis. Just keep playing around until you get a position that you like. So something like that seems to be good. Might just move it around a little bit like that. And I think that's pretty good. So I can see right now that the ocean is coming through our boat right here. So I just want to move our boat up a little bit, like that. And we're also going to just tab into edit mode in the ocean. And what I am going to do is subdivide just these faces here. And I'll do it one more time so that I can try to just delete all the faces right here in the center of the boat. And if we delete faces, still see some ocean right there. So I'm just going to select these by pressing shift, shift and alt R, or alt and right clicking. I'm going to double or subdivide it one more time. And then I'm just going to select this inner layer like that. I'm just going to unselect those outside faces and just delete it one more time and that's looking pretty good so now there's no ocean inside of our boat and it's perfectly fine now so now we can start working on the material of our ocean so what we're gonna do is create a new material name it ocean and I'm gonna open up the node editor below this and we're going to get rid of this diffuse node and first we're going to add in a emission shader because we want to create this glowing ocean or sea look so to do that we're going to need it to emit some light and what I'm going to do is add in a gradient texture and a color ramp node and if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled you can press control T and it'll bring up the mapping node plus the texture coordinate just like that and I want to make this white color a really nice blue something like that and this one should be a little bit darker so maybe something like that will look good and if we go into rendered view we can see what it's looking like right now and I want to increase the contrast between these so that there's a more finite line between them and now we can see the difference and I want to rotate this a bit so I want to rotate this by about negative 45 degrees on the z-axis and then I want to move it over a little bit too maybe the Y or is it the Z actually we want to move this negative point to 5 and then we can see right here is the line between the dark blue and the light blue that's exactly what we want so now what we want to do is create some fine dust size particles so to do that we're going to add in a cloud texture or noise texture and we're going to add in a, another color ramp Oops. and we want to make this black color slightly grayish color so something like that's good 
and we're going to position it at 0.6 and we'll position this at 0.65 press control shift and left click so we can take a look at it we want to increase the scale all the way to 500 then we want to duplicate this noise texture press shift D and move it up plug in the output from this mapping node decrease it back to 5 but increase the distortion to 1 and we're going to add in another color ramp here and we'll set this black value at 0.25 and I think that's pretty good so now we can add in a color mix RGB and if we plug this top noise texture into the factor and set the color to black we can see that some areas are darker while others are a little bit brighter and they have more of the specs which is exactly what we want so what I'm going to do now is add in a mix shader and a glass shader the glass shader is going to go on top the emission shader will be on the bottom and this will be our factor so let's take a look and right now it's a little too dark the light so I want to increase that strength to 2 and that's looking a little bit better I don't really like the HDR that's set up right now so we're gonna head over to the world tab and I'm just going to delete this world uh, setup and I'm going to come over here so we can edit it and I want to add in a environment texture and I'll press control T to bring up the mapping node and the texture coordinates and we're going to open up this HDR that I have right here and if we take a look at it I want this light that's here to be shining right here so to do that we have to rotate this on the z-axis by about a hundred and ten I believe yep and that's exactly what we want so that's looking good our ocean is looking good as well so let's go back to our material and right now there's not much reflection going on it's more transparent so we're going to duplicate this mix shader and add a glossy shader and just plug that in and I want to bring this roughness down to zero so that's looking a lot better and what I want to do now is add in our bump map to this so let's add in a image texture and I'm going to open up this water bump I have and I'll put a link in the description so you can download it I'm going to add in a normal map node here and then I'll just plug in this color into there and since this is a normal map you want to make sure that it's set to non-color data I'm also going to press control T to bring up the UV map with this and then I'm just going to plug this into the normal of our glossy shader and our glass shader just like that okay so right now we don't have the UV coordinates set up for our plane so let's just go to top view select everything and press U and then project from view bounds and that should do it let's take a look okay doesn't look bad I think I want to increase the scale by five like that that's looking a bit better okay so now what we're gonna do is just combine the two layers like that and we have to add in some particles underneath that'll be glowing so to do that I'm just gonna add in a cube move it down on the z-axis and then tab into edit mode and scale it by shift to Z until it's as big as the plane like that and then we're going to go to the third layer and actually add an icosphere 
we want to come over to the toolbar here and set the subdivisions down to one. We can give this a new material, name it glowing particle. And we're going to delete this diffuse shader and give it a emission shader. Then we're going to also add in a color ramp again. But this time we're going to set it to constant and set this slider at 0.5. And we want this to be a nice light blue again. So something like that. And this one will be a darker blue. Something like that will be good. And then we just want to add in object info node and take this random output and plug it into the factor. Okay? And I also want to increase the strength to 2 so it'll be a little bit brighter. And now we can come over here to where our cube is and create a particle system for it. Set the end frame to 1. Let's change it to emit from volume. And we're going to scroll down to the render settings, uncheck emitter, select object, type in icosphere, and then set the random size up to 1. I think that size is, but I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to uncheck even distribution so that it'll be a little bit more random. And let's take a look in rendered view and see what we get. And it's looking pretty nice. Let's just put our ocean in with it so we can see it from our camera view. And that's looking pretty nice. So we can see that a few of those particles are glowing from underneath. If we want, we can try to make them a little bit bigger. Maybe set it to point 0.1. I think that's good. Maybe we want to set it back to point 0.05. And just drag this up instead, like that. So let's take a look. And now we can start to see some of those particles shining through. So it's looking pretty good right now. But this uh, lifeboat here is a little bit dark. So what we're going to do is add in a spot lamp. And we're going to rotate it like that. Go to the side view, rotate it like that. Then just move it up. And we want to make sure that our boat is in the view of the, or in the cone of our lamp, like that. And I'm going to increase the strength to a thousand. And I'm going to say show cone. And I'm actually going to drag this in quite a bit, like that so that we just have a small area for our lifeboat. Something like that I think is good. Maybe I rotated that too much. Maybe that's better. And let's go to rendered view and take a look now. And that's already looking a lot better. So one last thing we want to add is some jellyfish underneath to just add to the glowing effect. So on this third layer here I'm just going to add in an image as plane. And there's this jellyfish that image that I got from the internet. I'm just going to move it to the side a bit. And let's take a look. And you can see that it's just a picture of a normal jellyfish. But it doesn't have a transparent background so to fix that First I'm going to switch that to a emission shader. Since it doesn't have a transparent background, what we're going to do is try to mask it out by adding a color ramp and increasing this contrast all the way up to like 0.1 and then adding a mix shader 
plugging this into the factor, plugging this into the first socket, and then adding a transparent shader and plugging it into the bottom. And if we take a look, we need to flip these two around. There you can see now it has a transparent background, which is exactly what we want. But right now all the jellyfish will look like it has the same color, which we don't want. We want it actually to have some random variation. So to do that, we're going to add in an object info node, add in another color ramp here, and plug in the random output and set this to constant. And I'm just going to make a bunch of random bluish colors and space these apart as evenly as possible so that we can mix this with our jellyfish image. So I'm just going to do something like I'll change this color slightly and then maybe add one more and make it something like that. And I might have to change this one a little bit. Make this one a little darker. I think that's looking pretty good. So now we can add in a color mix RGB and just mix these two with a factor of 0.5. And I'm also going to add in a hue saturation value node in between here. Add in another color ramp and plug this into the value. Take the random output here. And I want to set this to black value to 0.75. Nope, not that. I want to set the value to 0.75. So that way it's picking a random value between 0.75 and 1 for this value. So we'll get some that are a little bit darker than others. I think that's looking pretty good. So now we have our jellyfish image done. So we can add in a plane right now move this right in the middle of our particles there and then just scale it up by 10 and we'll give it a new particle system I'm going to set the number to 100 because we don't need that much and I'm going to scroll down to the render settings uncheck emitter I'm going to check our jellyfish plane set the random size to 1 and I'll increase the size to 0.7 come up here to rotation check that and just drag these values up to their max. And if we take a look, we can see that we're getting some nice random rotation. And if we go into rendered view, we'll take a look. And we can see some of the jellyfish here, but they're not that big. So maybe what I'm going to do is increase the size a little bit, maybe 1.2. And I might bring up that plane a little bit, like that. And we want to make sure that the second layer is selected as well. Now we can go to rendered view and take a look. And I'd say it's looking pretty good right now. I'm just going to check border in the render settings so that only this area will be seen. And it's looking pretty good. One thing I might do is select our ocean here and then decrease this to negative 0.2 see if that does anything let's take a look at our gradient texture maybe we have to pull these values in a little bit more like that and now if we take a look at our ocean you can see a little bit of color difference I might want to make this one a little darker then make this one brighter okay that's too much of a difference maybe 0.75 uh, I think that's fine so that's looking pretty good right now one thing we want to do is just adjust our camera settings so I'm gonna select our camera here I'm going to go over to the camera settings and check limits. And we want to add some depth of field, so we're going to select our torus object so that that will be our focus of the scene. 
and I'm going to change the size of this to about 0 0.04. Whoops. And let's go to our camera view and take a look. And I say it's looking pretty good. So what we're going to do now is come over to the render settings. I'm going to change this to a PNG. And I am going to increase the sampling to 100. And I'll render this out and come back when it's done. Alright, so it's done rendering, but I actually ended up making a few changes to the scene because it just wasn't looking right while it was rendering. So I'm just going to quickly show you what I did. First thing I did is I selected the ocean and tabbed into edit mode. And then all the faces of the ocean that weren't in the view of the camera, I ended up deleting. And then also, if we view the node editor, you can see that I also decrease the strength of this normal map here to 0.1 and basically that made the bump less visible it's not as strong and I also changed the location back to zero here and I played around with the color ramp a little bit so if we take a look you can see I adjusted the colors a little bit and just moving these sliders around I positioned it right about there so now if we take a look at it, you can see that there's some better color variation. So that's pretty much the, all the changes that I made to the scene. Now what we're going to do with our rendered image, we're actually going to come over here to the scene settings and change this from default to film. And then we'll decrease the exposure to negative 0.5 and increase the gamma to 1.5. We're also going to check the curves option here and we're going to increase this to about halfway right about there and we're just going to decrease this a little bit like that and then for the reds we'll decrease it a little bit for the greens we're going to increase it a little bit and for the blues we're going to bring it up all the way to about there so that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys thanks for watching i hope you learned something new if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.